I, I, I like Laura Ingram, and I've run into this. You've run into this, I'm sure, too. People who are Second Amendment supporters, people who may even be hunters, who say, listen, I just don't like this. This, I, I think this is appalling, or I think this is going to lead to the eradication of uh, elephants. And yet, when you start to delve into this issue, you find that there are conservation groups uh, in Africa who uh, 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 say, listen, without uh, licensed hunters, without this managed uh, hunting, we would see the, uh, the elephant population uh, decimated even more. In fact, that one of the best ways to combat poaching is by having <laughs> a, a, an actual uh, regulated hunting program. You know, that's right. And it's especially true with elephants in Africa. Um, you know, by the way, I have to say that I revere Laura Ingram as one of the great patriots of our time. I don't know that I've ever disagreed with her. That sounds unhealthy, but I've disagreed, disagreed <laughs> with everybody else who's important in my life. So I guess it's Laura's day. Um, you know, I think this is part of Laura falling into what the antis among us, the humane societies, of the United States, Wayne Pacelli, et cetera, want people to fall into, and that is that trap of conflating hunting with poaching. Um, she mm. uses the term poaching like she probably would hunting. Um, the two are as different as, um, as anything can be. Um, hunting is, as you point out, very regulated there and here and many other places throughout the world. Um, it's science-based and it's sustainable. I'm a hunter. I'm a conservationist. In order for me to continue what I love to do, hunting, for the adventure it brings to my life and a bunch of other things, um, I need healthy animal populations. So one thing we do as hunters more than anyone else is ensure that those animal populations that we hunt are extremely healthy and will last for generations to come. As far as elephants go, um, it, it's so true over there that elephants have to have a value. Um, the locals do not see them the way we see them. We see them as these majestic creatures that walk the land and should be there forever and don't harm anyone. The locals yeah. over there, I've been over to Africa five to six times hunting, I think six times, um, see them as dangers, see them as destructive devices. Um, they may grow a melon patch an entire year and they wake up to see that the elephant herd around their area has destroyed that entire um, uh, melon production plant that they created in a single night. Um, and that is the kind of devastation that they have to deal with on a regular basis. They might have their friends killed digging wells, as one person described to me during my last hunt in Mozambique. He lost his best friend. He was digging a well, interestingly enough, for elephants to use as a water source, and an elephant stomped him to death while he was digging that hole for those local elephants. Um, and so you see a lot of that, but in order for those populations to coexist with elephants and lions and other species like that, those species have to have a value. They have to bring something yes. to the people as opposed to death and destruction. And an example of that is regulated hunting. An elephant might cost $50,000 to hunt. 10 or 15 or $20,000 that a tourist might pay to hunt that elephant would go back to those local communities to give them an incentive to coexist and not kill those elephants.